The Glorious Revolution, also called the Revolution of 1688, was the overthrow of King James II of England by a union of English parliamentarians with the Dutch stadtholder William III of Orange Nassau. William's successful invasion of England with the Dutch fleet and army led to his ascending of the English throne as William III of England jointly with his wife Mary II of England, in conjunction with the documentation of the Bill of Rights 1689. King James's policies of religious tolerance after 1685 met with increasing opposition by members of leading political circles, who were troubled by the king's Catholicism and his close ties with France. The crisis facing the king came to a head in 1688, with the birth of the king's son, James Francis Edward Stuart, on 10 June. This changed the existing line of succession by displacing the heir presumptive, his daughter Mary, a Protestant and the wife of William of Orange, with young James as heir apparent. The establishment of a Roman Catholic dynasty in the kingdoms now seemed likely. Some of the most influential leaders of the Tories united with members of the opposition Whigs and set out to resolve the crisis by inviting William of Orange to England, which the Stadtholder, who feared an Anglo-French alliance, had indicated as a condition for a military intervention. After consolidating political and financial support, William crossed the North Sea and English Channel with a large invasion fleet in November 1688 landing at Tor Bay. After only two minor clashes between the two opposing armies in England, and anti-Catholic riots in several towns, James's regime collapsed, largely because of a lack of resolve shown by the king. However, this was followed by the protracted Williamite War in Ireland and Dundee's rising in Scotland, in England's distant American colonies. The revolution led to the collapse of the Dominion of New England and the overthrow of the province of Maryland's government. Following a defeat of his forces at the Battle of Reading on 9 December, James and his wife fled England. James, however, returned to London for a two-week period that culminated in his final departure for France on 23 December, by threatening to withdraw his troops. William in February 1689 convinced a newly chosen convention parliament to make him and his wife joint monarchs. The revolution permanently ended any chance of Catholicism becoming re-established in England. For British Catholics its effects were disastrous both socially and politically. Catholics were denied the right to vote and sit in the Westminster Parliament for over a century. They were also denied commissions in the army and the monarch was forbidden to be Catholic or to marry a Catholic. This latter prohibition remaining in force until the UK's succession to the Crown Act 2013 removed it in 2015. The revolution led to limited toleration for nonconformers Protestants, although it would be some time before they had full political rights. It has been argued, mainly by Whig historians, that James's overthrow began modern English parliamentary democracy. The Bill of Rights 1689 has become one of the most important documents in the political history of Britain and never since has the monarch held absolute power. Internationally, the revolution was related to the War of the Grand Alliance on mainland Europe. It has been seen as the last successful invasion of England. It ended all attempts by England in the Anglo-Dutch Wars of the 17th century to subdue the Dutch Republic by military force. However, the resulting economic integration and military cooperation between the English and Dutch navies shifted the dominance in world trade from the Dutch Republic to England and later to Great Britain. The expression, Glorious Revolution, was first used by John Hampton in late 1689, and as an expression that is still used by the British Parliament. The Glorious Revolution is also occasionally termed the Bloodless Revolution, albeit inaccurately. The English Civil War was still within living memory for most of the major English participants in the events of 1688, and for them, in comparison to that war the deaths in the conflict of 1688 were mercifully few. Background 
During his three-year reign, King James II became directly involved in the political battles in England between Catholicism and Protestantism, and between the divine right of kings and the political rights of the Parliament of England. James's greatest political problem was his Catholicism, which left him alienated from both parties in England. The Low Church Whigs had failed in their attempt to pass the Exclusion Bill to exclude James from the throne between 1679 and 1681, and James's supporters were the High Church Anglican Tories. In Scotland, his supporters in the Parliament of Scotland increased attempts to force the Covenanters to renounce their faith and accept Episcopalian rule of the Church by the monarch. When James inherited the English throne in 1685, he had much support in the Loyal Parliament, which was composed mostly of Tories. His Catholicism was of concern to many, but the fact that he had no son, and his daughters were Protestants, was of saving grace. James's attempt to relax the penal laws alienated his natural supporters, however, because the Tories viewed this as tantamount to disestablishment of the Church of England. Abandoning the Tories, James looked to form a King's Party as a counterweight to the Anglican Tories. So in 1687 James supported the policy of religious toleration and issued the Declaration of Indulgence. The majority of Irish people backed James II for this reason and also because of his promise to the Irish Parliament of a greater future autonomy. By allying himself with the Catholics, dissenters, and nonconformists, James hoped to build a coalition that would advance Catholic emancipation. In May 1686, James decided to obtain from the English courts of the common law a ruling that affirmed his power to dispense with acts of Parliament. He dismissed judges who disagreed with him on this matter as well as the Solicitor General Heenage Finch. Eleven out of the twelve judges ruled in favour of dispensing power. When Henry Compton, the Bishop of London, did not ban John Sharp from preaching after he gave an anti-Catholic sermon, James ordered his removal. In April 1687, James ordered the Fellows of Magdalen College, Oxford to elect a Catholic, Anthony Farmer, as their president. The Fellows believed Farmer ineligible under the college's statutes and so elected John Huff instead. The college statutes required them to fill the vacancy within a certain time and so could not wait for a further royal nomination. James refused to view Howe's election as valid and told the Fellows to elect the Bishop of Oxford. James responded by sending some ecclesiastical commissioners to hold a visitation and install him as president. The fellows then agreed to the Bishop of Oxford as their president but James required that they admit they had been in the wrong and ask for his pardon. When they refused, most of the fellows were rejected and replaced by Catholics. In 1687, James prepared to pack Parliament with his supporters so that it would repeal the Test Act and the penal laws. James was convinced by addresses from dissenters that he had their support and so could dispense with relying on Tories and Anglicans. James instituted a wholesale purge of those in offices under the Crown opposed to James's plan. In August the Lieutenancy was remodelled and in September over 1,000 members of the city livery companies were ejected. In October James gave orders for the Lord's Lieutenants in the provinces to provide three standard questions to all members of the Commission of the Peace. Would they consent to the repeal of the Test Act and the penal laws? Would they assist candidates who would do so? And they were requested to accept the Declaration of Indulgence. In December it was announced that all the offices of deputy lieutenants and justices of the peace would be revised. Therefore, during the first three months of 1688, hundreds of those asked the three questions who gave hostile replies were dismissed. More far-reaching purges were applied to the towns. In November a regulating committee was founded to operate the purges. Corporations were purged by agents given wide discretionary powers in an attempt to create a permanent royal electoral machine. 
Finally, on 24 August 1688, James ordered writs to be issued for a general election. James also created a large standing army and employed Catholics in positions of power within it. To his opponents in Parliament this seemed like a prelude to arbitrary rule, so James prorogued Parliament without gaining Parliament's consent. At this time, the English regiments of the army were encamped at Hounslow, near the capital. It was feared that the location was intended to overawe the city. The army in Ireland was purged of Protestants, who were replaced with Catholics. And by 1688 James had more than 34,000 men under arms in his three kingdoms. In April 1688, James reissued the Declaration of Indulgence and ordered all clergymen to read it in their churches. When the Archbishop of Canterbury, William Sancroft, and six other bishops wrote to James asking him to reconsider his policies, they were arrested on charges of seditious libel, but at trial they were acquitted to the cheers of the London crowd. Matters came to a head in June 1688, when the king had a son, James, until then, the throne would have passed to his daughter, Mary, a Protestant. The prospect of a Catholic dynasty in the kingdoms of England, Scotland and Ireland was now likely.